Hey, what's up everybody? So I'm gonna walk you through a bicep curl workout that I'll do with you. I'll talk you through it. I'll coach you through it the way I would normally coach someone on how to do a bicep curl the fix fit way. So the first thing you're gonna do, grab your dumbbell and this way of learning how to move, this formula applies to how we coach all movement. So step one, just start to do your bicep curl, right? You can use both dumbbells. I just need a free arm to kind of show you what we're looking for. But for now, just do your bicep curl. And then I want you to hold at the top, give it time to burn. Let your body tell you what it's using, right? So yes, we can assume that, yeah, your bicep's gonna burn, that's okay. But what else is happening? When most people hold that curl up, when there's tension holding the dumbbell out here, what they're kind of shocked to uh, find is that they're gonna feel a lot more tension in their shoulder, which is what I'm feeling now, like right through here, even their neck, which is also what I'm feeling. Some forearm, but pretty good amount of shoulder burn happening. Yes, the bicep is on, but it's almost like it's secondary. So try that with one side. We always want to start with how we would move kind of unconsciously, just curl, curl, and then hold. So check the other side, because don't assume that one side is going to be the same as the other. So right now on this side, I do feel a little bit more bicep on this side, more forearm, my neck, but not so much shoulder. So just to remember what you're feeling, because when we add something to it, when we sprinkle a little bit of the mechanics or the fix fit stuff, then you could compare the two to see if it's more optimal, you're in the right direction. So if you do a bicep curl with the mechanics first, then it starts to translate into more real life applications, the sports you like to play. It's gonna allow you to protect your bicep from injuring or tearing. As you get older, it's a very common issue or if you play any sports. So what we're trying to do is figure out how that bicep is designed to work. So when you start curling, whatever you're feeling, the most common thing, like myself, a lot of shoulder and neck. What I'm not feeling is a whole lot of chest, lat, core, any of these big movers, okay? So the idea is, if you're using your arm to do something, grab and pull, if something's falling and you reach out to grab it, that's where a lot of those injuries happen, you plant your arm down, when you fall, you wanna make sure that the bicep is not just floating where there's nothing supporting it. So if you look, think sport application, right? If you're doing jujitsu, you grab and you pull. Doing a deadlift, you grab and hold on. What would make more sense? If I'm grabbing somebody, pulling it into me, does this look like a stable position? How does that feel? So if I'm doing a bicep curl, all the weight's being held right here, right? If I'm doing a deadlift hold, trying to use my bicep, doing a switch grip or whatnot, I don't want my trap and my bicep to do all the work, right? So what's our other option? If you do a bicep curl, the way your body's designed to move, you should get your bicep to talk to the pec and the lat. The big movers, right? You could check out my video on posture, but it, the same mechanics apply. So anything you do in life, if you're using your arm with that shoulder, you should be using the pec and lat. So give it a try now. When you're just focusing, flex your pec as hard as you can. So from here, I'm gonna flex my pec. Use that chest muscle to hold that dumbbell weight down, okay? So right now, I'm just trying to instead of using the neck, anchor my shoulder down into that pec, into that chest muscle. And then now I know it's gonna be real weird, but I'm pulling with the pec, the shoulder down. Using my pec to anchor everything down, that's gonna hold everything in place while I bicep curl up. So now as I curl, that pec is doing all the work right now, holding everything in place. So as I'm doing curls, my biceps bending, my biceps bending the arm, lifting the weight, so that's burning. But what's holding it in place is my pec. 
I don't feel that kind of strain here. I don't feel this strain here. It's all pec focused. So even though you're doing curls, what I felt, what I feel now is that my pec is getting tired. It's doing the work. I'm getting my pec and my bicep to talk to each other. So now when I do anything like grab something, right? I'm holding something heavy if it's falling. I'm grabbing onto someone and pulling it into me. I'm using that pec and that bicep together so that I'm not relying on my neck. The second thing to focus on with the bicep curl is you should also be using the lat to anchor it down. So remember that posture video, you should be using your chest and back muscles for anything shoulder related. So as you curl for the second set, I want you to try to find your lat. So pull the shoulder down, open up the posture a little until you can feel your lat turn on. So now that my lat is on, I wanna anchor all that weight in the lat when I start curling. So right now, I feel my lat hold the shoulder down and hold all the weight while I curl. So now, compared to the first curl that we did earlier, when you're doing regular curls, right? I always get people to start moving real quick and then hold. Now I can really tell the difference because all the tension now, I can feel it in my shoulder and neck way more because my body has felt a better option. So now what I wanna do is make that adjustment. I wanna flex my pec and then do the curls. So we call these pec curls. You're essentially getting that bicep to work with the pec, which is what you need for movements. Again, like deadlifts, jujitsu or anything arm related, pull-ups. Also, then you wanna test the lat. Tighten down the lat and then do the curl so you're getting your lat to talk to the bicep. Whew. So compare the two, do the curl your way, and then see if you can get the big muscles, the proper shoulder mechanics, where you're getting the pec and lat to do the work with the bicep. That way, this bicep curl becomes more functional. Again, if you use your arm for anything, you don't wanna anchor all of that weight in your neck. So as the weight gets heavier for bicep curls, you're probably gonna shrug up a little. Hopefully now you're more aware of that. So what you're trying to do now is if you curl this way, you're making that imbalance worse. You're getting that shoulder to tighten up more, pull your shoulder out of position, and that biceps left to kind of fend for itself. Nothing's happening here and here. So. Long story short, if you want to continue to train biceps, we recommend keep doing it because you need that to get stronger. But you can also make it more functional by tying in your pec, your lat, and for more advanced versions, try to tie in your lower body and core as well. So try it out, make sure you're using all the different muscles, and then see how the bicep applies to the movements you care about, deadlift, pull-ups. So make sure you guys are using the pec and lat and then one of the concepts of learning to lift is you'll start to understand how heavy you should go up. That's always a question we get as a trainer, as a coach. What weight should I use? What percentages, should I go up and down in weight? Only move in the range of motion where you can keep the right muscles on. So when we're doing the curls, I'm gonna flex my pec and lat, keep those on. I can feel both of them stay on. Once I start to lose the pec or the lat, let's say I'm at like rep 10 and I start to go back to the neck, I need to stop. That means those muscles have given out. And then if my pec and lat shuts off, then where does it go? Right back to the neck and shoulder. So number one, make sure the big muscle stays on. And if you keep testing that envelope, keep going up and wait. Number two, a lot of people can only move at a partial range for now. So let's say you get to hear your pec and lats on, but if you go all the way down or all the way up, but then you lose it, you now know that that's too far. So that's your gauge to know how much you should add and go down, go up or go down. And also what kind of range of motion are we looking at? How well can your pec and lat move that weight all the way down and all the way up? So your goal is to slowly build that range of motion under tension. So give it a shot. And again, if you want more on the posture and the shoulder mechanics, check out my posture video. 
If this helped you out, if this is interesting stuff, please share and subscribe. Until next time.